This week, Hobie Outdoor Adventures takes place in a secret location, a private lake somewhere on the East Coast, with special guests Mike Iaconelli, Bassmaster Angler of the Year, and the Australian Bass Tournaments champion Carl Jockamson, who is also the first Bassmaster Elite Series pro from Australia. So this week we're at Lake X with uh, Mike Iaconelli, secret little spot apparently full of bass and we're testing the new Hobie Outback, brand new. No social media, no phone calls, nothing. This is top secret stuff. Got to uh, be able to keep my mouth shut for the next month or so, but some pretty exciting stuff coming up. Good one. Dude, I heard that. That was awesome. I saw him like waking. Wow water underneath the mat. Oh my god. And I was like waiting and waiting and then next to me he crunched it. So our first morning out in the brand new Hobie Outback. Um, I've had the Outback for almost three years now. I've fished in Australia in it. I've fished all over the US in it. And the new one is, uh, it, the improvements are amazing. The fishability of this Outback is just tenfold. So I got the flat bottom, I was able to stand up. Uh, it was super stable, it was quiet in this shallow water and the ease of everything just made, made that morning just super special because I wasn't fighting anything all morning. I realised I was fishing for 95% of the time and only a little bit of time adjusting and moving the kayak. It was all fishing. There's a big one. Oh God! Oh God! That's a four pounder. <laughs> You hear this term, match the hatch. It's always fly fishing guys that talk about it. But it's the same in bass fishing. If you look, there are dragonflies everywhere. And I'm seeing two distinct colors in these dragonflies. I'm seeing browns, and then I'm seeing a lot of these dragonflies are blue. There you go. And I want you to look at the color of that bait. There's one right behind me. Light blue, pale blue, Ike's magic. Match your bait to the color of the dragonflies, and you're gonna catch some of those things. It's, it's funny because we got a, a bit of a late start, but right away the bite was hot. I mean, uh, I look over at Carl, he's throwing this really unique frog around mats. And, and it kind of came together right away as you would expect it. Summertime, fish under heavy mats, super thick grass, this, this grass that we call it locally, we call it Black Death, but it's so thick you can't throw any other lure through it. Start out unbelievable. He caught two really big fish, you know, three to four and a half pound class fish on a frog. And I started catching a few. Um, you know, the interesting thing is that it seemed like my bites were three pounds or smaller. But every time Carl got a bite, it was one of those big ones. We really felt like we had a pulse on what these fish were doing. Water is clean, dude. That grass is just like a big filter. First impression new Outback, uh, amazing. Uh, fish abilities, awesome. The balance, the stability is awesome. That's what I'm looking for in a kayak. I'm looking for something that's stable, something I can stand up in. Um, long cast set the hook. Uh, sleeker design, took a lot of weight out of the front, and there's no slap on the water, which is real important. So. Get into a spot quicker, get into a spot more quietly. You know, the storage is pretty awesome. One of the first thing I noticed is I looked under my feet and they went from a horizontal storage box to a vertical one and just made it so much easier to get to. It was pretty awesome. Some of the other features on that thing, um, the brand new H Tracks Deluxe, which is really cool from storing tackle to storing tools but especially for uh, adding accessories, you know, um, Lowrance depth finder, my GoPros, my cameras, cell phone mounts. So that's a really cool feature. And then the neat thing on the steering is totally redesigned. It's got a left and right side steering knob that's recessed all the way down. You're not gonna get your line tangled around it. It's less things to get in the way. I move around a lot in that thing. I'm very active in my kayak, and I noticed that there's way more room. You know, the seat is an inch and a half wider, um, a lot more room to, to get around, to move. 
You know, the other thing that's awesome is it's got the brand new Guardian system in it. You know, if you've got a structure scan transducer, you know, those things are big. The Guardian basically has a system that lets that thing retract. You're going over a rough terrain, you're pulling it in the back of your truck, you let it down, and you're in full scan mode, and you get an amazing image. Check out the all-new 2019 Hobie Mirage Outback and the full lineup of Hobie kayaks at Hobie.com. Hobie Outdoor Adventures we will be right back. Welcome back to Hobie Outdoor Adventures. We join our celebrity guests, Mike Iaconelli and Carl Jockamson for a fun day of fishing on the all-new 2019 Hobie Mirage Outbacks. You know, it's funny in fishing because once you figure a pattern out, you just expect it to keep going, you know? You figure it out and you're like, this is gonna last a couple more days. This will last probably till the end of the summer. Um, so that was our mindset going into the second part of day one. We relaunched and got an evening bite in. You know, I'm jacked because we saw frogfish. We knew they were under the mats. Now the sun's going down. Now it's gonna get even better. But today is not just about catching fish. Everyone is still having a great time enjoying the outdoors and spending time with family and friends. You know, we were so confident we were dialed into this pattern, this frog mat pattern, that I asked the family to come out. Uh, got my wife to come out, my little girl Stella, my son Vegas, and I just figured we'd all come out, the fishing be so easy, we can kind of fish and play and fish and play, and immediately we kind of both, Carl and I both sensed that something had happened. Carl got a few quick bites uh, on the frog and they missed it. Um, I was hardly getting any bites. And then Vegas, who knows this lake really good and is, and is a master at catching fish out here, had a hard time catching them. So we kind of knew something was up. Three or four years ago, I was really a newbie to kayak fishing and then I entered the Hobie family and now I'm getting to pass it down to the rest of the family. Uh, Becky's on a stand-up paddle board, she's in a kayak. We've got Estella and Vegas both in Hobie kayaks so it's so cool to see that and you know I, I see this just passing down through the generations and that's how the sport is. Once you get them hooked on something, once you get them hooked on fishing, and being out there, being on the lake in their Hobie, they're gonna keep passing it down. And that's, I, I feel good about that. I know they're gonna pass it to their kids, their kids will keep passing it down, and we'll always have kids fishing and kids kayak fishing. Go Big Man Chase! Oh my God! Oh my God! What the? God. Oh. <laughs> that feels good, man. Perfect time to switch tactics. That sun starts going down, low light, evening time. Um, top waters are great. Most people think about um, hard baits when they're thinking about topwaters. Frogs, buzz baits, walking baits. But I love to take just little plastics and rig them weightless. That's just a little crawfish imitation. And Texas rig on the back of a jig, that's perfect. But weightless, when you buzz a crawl, does a great job of creating just enough commotion to make these bass think it's a little bluegill. Look at that thing. It's called a crawl but the size of it's about the size of a small bluegill. And when you're flicking it on top, then things can't resist it right there. That's a nice fish. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Oh wait, that looks, he looked long. That's long. That wasn't that same fish, though. I'm a pike master. I should have went to Sweden. 
<laughs> I was just saying, I was bragging the fact that we didn't catch a pike all day and now I caught like 20. Carl and we're like, we gotta come back out tomorrow morning and we have got one more shot at figuring this out. And we really assume that the next day, if we got that really early start, and I mean sun just rising, 6 a.m. sharp, it would be nonstop action on top water, flipping the mats, it would be easy. Well, we'll find out how Ike's plan will work out. Hobie Outdoor Adventures will be right back after these messages. Welcome back to Hobie Outdoor Adventures. Our special guest professional bass anglers, Mike Iaconelli and Carl Jockamson are back again on a private lake in the top secret location. They make some bait adjustments and now they both have three rods, but they also continue using the frogs from yesterday morning. The early morning bites should be really good. <laughs> Pike hole. And straight away we started getting bites and we both got a ton of bites, but they were all pike. Um, we just, we didn't catch the right species. The pike had moved into the backs of these pockets and it was literally one after the other. A lot of fun. Came through this really thick mat, ate the frog, awesome bite. Still not the right species. What you got there? Oh, no way. Biggest crappie you've ever seen. On a frog? On a frog. Oh my God. That's not possible. <laughs> Look at the colors on it. Wow. That is a pretty fish. Stuck in the mat. Uh, uh. Oh. Look at that. This is some of the toughest fishing. When you look at this, you see two or three types of vegetation here, pads, easy to fish. But then when you get to this stuff, this is the tough stuff. This is Elodia, they call it cheese, they call it black death, and it is impossible. It's like hair, it sticks to everything. So a lot of your traditional techniques, they're, they're useless. You can't take two turns of a handle. It's frustrating to have to work through this. But here's the other great thing. If you look at this, grab a fresh patch. If you look at this grass and you look at it in your hand, this stuff is the circle of life. It's the start of the circle of life. Those little tiny grass shrimp attract the bait fish and the bluegill. The bait fish and the bluegill attract the bass and it's, it's just a big circle. So it's hard to fish. Guys, avoid this like the plague, but that's, that's how you're gonna catch bass, especially when it's tough. Right back in it. So as the day went on, um, it got a little bit, it was a little bit tough and we knew we were gonna have to make some adjustments and I just got hooked on that frog so I kept it in my hand and Ike was changing one after the other and s soon enough he figured him out and he caught one bass, then he caught two and then he caught three and then he didn't stop for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> wow, man, after a slow start, it feels so good <laughs> to finally catch one like that. Look at that. That is a thick back called Gorilla Backs, man. Look at that thing. Real dark, too. You know he's living in that grass. When you can look at that fish, those colors are real dark. If that fish is black, he's been living in this stuff. He's not a main lake fish that swam in here. He's a resident. That's a big one. Let that thing go. Uh oh, one's got it. Biggin'. Biggin'. Oh, biggin'. Biggin'. Oh, God. Getting dialed now. It feels so good to get dialed. Oh, that is a big one. That's a tank. Ah! Don't do that. Oh, look at that. That's a good one right there. You know, these last two or three fish all came from, I call them satellite mats because they're isolated. They're by themselves. 
the wind shifted today, totally came out a different direction. If you look at every one of these mats, that wind really does position the fish. That current is pushing the little bait, it's pushing the crawfish, the bluegill, toward those mats. And those fish are just setting up and ambushing, man. It's a big old long, long skinny one there. It's a nice fish. Thank you very much. Coming up, well, the day just keeps getting better, and we learn more about Mike's pattern. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Hobie Outdoor Adventures. We're kayak fishing on the all-new 2019 Hobie Mirage Outbacks with Mike Iaconelli and Carl Jockamson, who always travels with his fiance and the bass dog, Rue. Um, I'm lucky to have Kayla and our little dog Rue on the road with us all over the country. Kayla's my, one of my biggest supporters and we just work as a team everywhere we go. So I was super lucky Kayla got to come out. We get limited time to really fun fish and Kayla loves to kayak fish just like me. She grabbed the light little compass, I got the outback and we went out for the afternoon and uh, tried to catch a few bass. And even Rue, the bass dog, decides to get in on the action. Yep. Oh my God, five pounder. Yeah. Ah! Ah! Don't you come off of there. <laughs> Dead open water. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yes, man. Thank you. Oh my God, it died. Oh my God, this is dry. <laughs> Welcome to fishing against Mike Iaconelli. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is what fishing's all about though. Mike is a, he's the best in the world. That frog bite yesterday, sometimes you get too dialed in and then you keep doing it and the fish change. You got to adjust and that's what happened today and Mike's just absolutely killing them. But I've just got to stay with it and get a bite. I just got to get some confidence. It's such a big thing in fishing. There's one. It's a little guy. It's no four or five pounder, but it's a start. It's the right species anyway. We finally busted the five, five pound mark. Oh! Look at that, finally. <laughs> oh my God, look at that thing. That's a legitimate five pounder. Keeping the sport going is an important thing. Um, and for me, you know, I remember who got me in the fishing. It was my mom, it was my uncle, it was my grandfather that took me fishing and got me into the sport. And the best thing I can do, and I love doing it is spreading it, you know, is, is passing it down to my kids. So, man, it was getting to have Vegas and Estella out there fishing. That's better than catching any five or 10 pounder anywhere. But my wife, Becky, have really built up this thing called the Ike Foundation. And we're focusing on keeping kids fishing, uh, especially in places where they don't normally fish. Um, a lot of these urban areas that have great fisheries, kids are growing up without a rod and reel. They're growing up without the opportunity to go fishing. So we started the Ike Foundation in hopes of keeping kids in the outdoors, keeping them fishing. Another neat thing about the Ike Foundation Celebrity Pro-Am is that the winner of the Ike Foundation Kayak Fishing Division will qualify to compete in the Hobie Bass Open Series Tournament of Champions. The event draws top kayak anglers not only from the Northeast, but from all over the country to compete in the amazing urban city area of New Jersey. Thank you very much. Have a Hobie day.